Mary Dillon was the daughter-in-law of another Mary Dillon, who had been threatened with the loss of her Christmas charities if she did not take her child out of the convent school and place her in the landlord's national school. Receiving Christmas charities is an indication that the Dillon family struggled. The younger Mary Dillon gave birth to 14 children, six of whom died before the age of 14. One child died 10 minutes after birth, a boy died of the 1918 flu, and another boy died of a broken neck at the railroad station. Behind the Dillon's old Church Street house, there were a couple of sheds, one used as a workshop and the other housed pigs. The emptyings from the pigsty, as well as from the family's outdoor toilet, were put into an ash pit. If there was no back entrance into the Dillon's yard, everything going to and from the yard including the pigs and the contents of the pit, had to travel through the house. In addition to supplementing her husband's labouring wages by taking in lodgers and boarders, it would have been necessary for Mary's children to ease the burden. One married a 21-year-old soldier stationed at Care and probably would have moved away with him when he was transferred. One of Mary's sons joined the Royal Air Force in 1918. After the war, her daughter Bridget, at the age of 17, obtained a housemaid position with the Irish command of Queen Mary's Army Auxiliary Corps. Mary Dillon's children scattered. In 1932, Mary Dillon suffered another loss. Her husband John succumbed to cancer. Life was surely difficult for Mary Dillon. The deaths of six children and her husband, the moving away of other children and the poor financial situation. However, it is due to her resilience and that of other care women that later generations had better lives. We salute the extraordinary, ordinary women of care.